This episode of this Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey is brought to you by energy healer Jean Borders' personal powerful transformation program. Know you're leaving money on the table but can't figure out how to bring it in? Need to double your productivity and profitability? Need an extra push to get things moving in the right direction? Visit www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com slash transformation now and apply for a business consultation with Jean. Welcome to the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Prepare to feel a sense of relief and empowerment as we get rid of the baggage you've been carrying that's held up your business success up until now. Be sure to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com. While you're there, subscribe to us via your favorite network. Now, lean in, get comfortable, and prepare to take off. Hello, everyone. This is Jean Border, your host for the Focus Practical Dreamers Journey podcast. I have a special guest with me here today. This is Kate Troyer with Home Slice Living. Hi, Kate. How are you? I am so well, Jean. How are you? I'm fine. Actually, I'm a little chilly. It's chilly here today for whatever reason. So I like, got a sweater on. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm definitely getting used to it. I woke up this morning and it was about 60. I didn't have my heat on last night. It was about 60 degrees in here when I woke up and I was like, I'm not okay with this. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm adjusting. Yeah, it happens. Some people love it. Some people hate it. Mm-hmm. So talk to me. You used to be like a home stager and then you moved yeah. into something that's sort of related, but not really. So yeah. talk to me about that journey from where you were to where you are, what you're doing. Oh my gosh. Home. Yeah. I, I love to answer this question because it's, um, it was definitely an unexpected transition for me. And it, it's definitely been, um, an, an interesting journey. So I, um, started a home staging and design consulting business about six years ago, uh, did extremely well with it, extremely fast. And everything was really going great. I had no complaints. Business was really busy. I was doing really well for myself and making quite a, a name for my company um, here locally, locally in the Cleveland area. And I went on a girls trip to Florida. And um, this was about three years ago. So about halfway into my into my journey. Um, and we were very intentional about making this a kind of like a spiritual girl's trip, right? Like we were getting up every morning and doing Dr. Joe Dispenza meditations and like really just trying to get more connected to ourselves and, and sharing within that experience together. And one day that we did these meditations, I came out and I was just like, very frustrated. And I'm like, you know, I just don't feel connected to a mission or something higher than myself. And and I feel like I'm supposed to be doing more or I'm supposed to be doing something that feels more impactful. And I had just so happened that on this trip, I had brought this feng shui manual with me that I had had printed and binded years prior. And for some reason, I think I found it in a closet or something when I was packing. And I thought, oh, I'll take this to read it on the plane or whatever. You know, I've always kind of wanted to dive into it. And when I opened it later that day, there was a sticky note in there. I literally still have this. It was a a little orange sticky note that said, teach this. And I thought, okay, that's kind of weird, but maybe I saw something on a page and I used to, you know, run little classes and do CE stuff for real estate agents. So I thought, well, maybe I saw something in here, you know, that, that I wanted to teach, whatever. And I, and I kind of thought it was odd, but I didn't think too much about it. Um, and later that day, we ended up going to a bookstore and my friend comes over and she goes, they have a whole section on feng shui. 
And I said, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll buy a book or two. I ended up buying every single book that they had because I didn't know what I didn't know and what I wanted to know. And there were all these different kinds of feng shui and different takes on it. And I just said, okay, I'm going to take everything. Um, and I'm sitting by the pool later that day. And the first book that I opened up was called uh, The Western Guide to Feng Shui by Tara Catherine Collins. And within the first two chapters, I not only felt extremely connected to her as the author and practitioner, but I also was like picking up on things that I was already doing in my home staging business that I was already doing with my design consulting clients, with my decorating clients. And I also saw a lot, saw a lot of similarities in reasons that I was constantly manipulating my environment when I was a kid. I had um, what I like to say an interesting upbringing, and I definitely was using my space as a child to create some sort of foundation for normalcy and support and, and security. And that was kind of something that I took into my adult life and was really kind of the jumping off point for why I ended up starting a staging company without really connecting those two things together. So when I started to read about feng shui and, and just get these basic principles kind of, you know, rolling in my head, I thought, wow, like I kind of already do this. What can I do for people if I really understood this practice, if I was extremely educated in it? And I thought, well, let me see if this woman, you know, Tara has any YouTube videos or whatever. And, you know, she didn't have any YouTube videos, but what she did had um was a certification program, an entire school dedicated to learning feng shui. And within that week, I decided to sign up for the school um, to get certified. I decided I wasn't going to do home staging anymore. I went ahead and um, got rid of all of my inventory, which was a lot. It took me months to do it. Decided not to take on any more clients um, in the staging world and just went full on um, into feng shui. So I know that's kind of a long story, but I think the totality of it needs to be told because it's really, it really is truly what happened. And it's how I went from, you know, already having a very successful business that I very much enjoyed, but said, wait a minute, I want something more. And I feel like, you know, wh whatever you, you want to call it, God, the universe, whatever said, okay, you want more. Here's how you can have a, you know, a bigger impact in something that really resonates with you. And I just kind of took it and ran with it. Cool. So here's a question. Did you yeah. change the placement of things in your home after you did all that study? Oh, my gosh, yes. And I did it during, too. So it was really fascinating to me. It was like while I was studying, I was also reading this really long list of books and just combing through every little area in my home. And so I was organizing, but I was, you know, being mindful of the different energetic centers that lie in your home and the different energies that lie in them. And I literally like picked my space apart. And what I think what I found so powerful and it's something that I am really passionate passionate about in my personal practice and my practice with clients is yes, it's about furniture arrangement and things like that, but it's so much more about your personal connection with your space. And the fact that when you have a, even just a little bit of knowledge about how your home is really connected to you, your home is constantly showing you things. And it's really giving you previews to what could be going to happen in your life. Like how is it preparing you intuitively for what's to come? Um, but also if there are things that have happened in your past or things that are going on in your present, it's showing up in your space. You know, in feng shui, we basically in the simplest form believe that your environment is a mirror of you. So anything that, has gone on, is going on, or you want to go on in your future is literally showing up in your space. And if you can learn how to read that, it really can give you this other tool of connecting with your 
self personally that um, I've had clients that have literally gotten more from a home wellness consultation with me than they have by being in therapy for a, a few years. So it's really powerful. That's really interesting. Here's one that I hear a lot is um, clutter. Talk to me about the impact clutter has, what that might mean, what addressing that clutter might look like, how it might change things. For yeah, someone. for sure. I like to think of like <clears throat> clutter as like one of the first things that we can address. So whether you are crazy into feng shui like I am and you want to get into all the nuances or whether you just want to add in a basic home wellness practice into your everyday life, I think clutter is the first thing that I encourage people to tackle and to start looking at within their space. So first of all, I'd like to define what I believe clutter is. So to me, clutter is anything that you don't love, you don't use, or it doesn't serve a purpose. So that I think one helps people to understand that, you know, the mail that piles up for a week or two before you shred it and go through it, like, I don't consider that clutter, I consider that like life and living. Um, and same thing um, goes for, you know, just living in your home and your space, like clutter is not oh my living room is a mess because my kids were in here playing today. Like that's living, that's life. And just because you have a feng shui or a home wellness practice, it doesn't mean that your home needs to be perfect and spotless all the time, because that actually kind of like is, you know, most likely is going to lean towards you being a little too controlling, like where things have to be perfect. And like that to me is not real life, right? Again, if your home is reflecting what's going on with you, you know, even in bouts of chaos, it might be because you're starting a new business or you're creating something and we can't have creation without a little bit of chaos, right? And that might show up in your space for a season. So clutter being something that we can easily, um, I think, kind of address. Again, clutter is anything that you don't love, you don't use, or doesn't serve a purpose. So I like to start with what do we not love in our home? Because I work with so many clients that I say, tell me about this artwork. Tell me about this furniture. Tell me about this room. Oh, well, we hate our dining room because I hate the dining room table. I got it from, you know, it's it was my ex and I's or it was my husband's grandma's and, you know, she wasn't very nice or I've just always hated it. And but we can't get rid of it. And I like to start there. Anything that you look around in your home and say, I hate this. Do yourself a favor and get rid of it because at the core of everything that we surround ourselves with, everything is energy. Like that's a proven fact. It's not woo woo. It's not spiritual. It's not anything like that. That is factual information that everything is energy and is made up of energy. So if something is made up of energy, it means it holds energy. And if you look at something every day and think, God, I hate that or you have some sort of negative emotion that's tied to it, that is the frequency that it's putting out to you and into your space. So yeah, you probably don't use your dining room if you hate your dining room table. And that's, you know, what you think about every time. So, you know, and someone wouldn't necessarily think that a dining table is clutter. But to me, clutter is anything that is causing disruption or blockage within your home, right? So I like to start people out with that. And sometimes that's a little less overwhelming where they're not like, oh, thank God, I don't need to go through every single drawer and nook and cranny, right? Start with the things that you hate. And maybe you don't just throw them out and, you know, to the trash, like see if you can give them away, see if you can donate them, see if you can sell them on Facebook Marketplace, right? When I'm kind of done with things, I say, oh, let's see if I can sell it. And if I can't, then I end up donating it or, you know, I'll put it out for free or something like that. So I think that's a great place to start, right, is, is what do I literally, and don't worry about the things you feel neutral about. Start with the things that you're like, I hate that. And start to say, why do I hate it and can I let it go? Um, and then I like to say for, you know, the clutter that we're thinking about, things that don't serve a purpose, 
right? So if you haven't used something within a year, I typically say get rid of it. You know, if you're saving something for, well, I might need this if, that's actually related to a lack mindset, right? And especially, you know, we're kind of speaking to business owners and entrepreneurs, we need to eliminate as much or if all lack mindset as much as possible, right? So holding on to things thinking that, oh, I might need this at some point is you saying to yourself, if I actually need this in the future, I'm not going to have the ability or the funds to purchase it again. And that's the thing, like our society tells us that we need to purchase everything for ourselves. But how many people do we know that like maybe they use that item all the time and we could borrow it from someone, right? Or when it comes time to thinking we need it, we actually don't need it, you know? And our society tells us that we have to hang on to all of these things and that's, you know, simply not true. And then when we get into things that, so where are we at? Don't love, don't use, if it doesn't serve a purpose, that is the things that pile up everywhere. It's the things in the drawers, it's the clothes that, again, kind of we don't wear that we're hanging on to in case we get bigger or smaller or whatever. Again, that's telling us that, you know, we're waiting for something to happen that maybe we don't prefer. Um, That's where I like to say start in one, you know, go room by room, set a timer for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. Don't overwhelm yourself and go through as much as you can in that 15 minutes and then be done. And then do that for as long as you need to, as many times as you need to until you've moved throughout, you know, your space. And I know that that's not necessarily like a fun thing to do. Like, I don't necessarily love to do that, but I think that it's important that I know what is in my home and that I'm constantly kind of evaluating that, right? Because everything also has a season. And sometimes you get so much piled up that you don't remember what you have and you buy another one. So now you have two of things that you, the things that you don't use very often. So Mm -hmm. there is that. Um, Another area of concern for me, I'm an energy worker. And so when I deal with my clients, a lot of times they will hold on to things from old relationships that they just never gave back, or they were waiting on somebody to come and pick them up. And I'm like, well, you have their address. You can always mail it to them. Right. But when they keep it in a box in their bedroom, oh my gosh, the energy of that. Every day they have to walk by that that old relationship, that failed relationship, the the tears and the anger and the angst and the betrayal, whatever it is that's attached to that that box of that person's stuff in their bedroom. I'm like, first thing, you move it out. <laughs> Yes. And that's a very basic thing, but it's almost like they need permission. Yeah. You know, so we need to give ourselves permission to make a choice that yes, that served a purpose that was in the past, but now I'm, I'm moving towards something different and this doesn't, it might've served me in the past. They did a great job for me in the past, but now it's time for it to serve someone else and attach that energy to donating it or selling it or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a conversation I get into with my clients quite. Well, I'll say occasionally when there are relationship issues going on. Yeah. So home wellness practitioner, what is the difference between a well home and a sick home? Oh, oh my God. What a great (laughs) question. (laughs) I have never been asked that. And I am like, you've got my little wheels turning. I absolutely love that. Um, I'm going to make a note of that because I, I just love it. So here's what I would say. A well home is one that has been curated with intention. Um, and one that is mindful, right, of like the different areas of clutter, one that you feel connected to, that allows you to have this new awareness about yourself. Um, And when I say connected to, I literally believe that your home is literally like a life-size vision board. And so 
it holds things from your past and, and present, but it can also hold the energy of what you are trying to achieve next. It can set you up for success. It can remind you of the person that you are stepping into, the goals that you are trying to accomplish in your personal life, in your business, in your relationships, all of those things. That to me is is a home that is filled with wellness. A home that is sick is one that is ignored. It's one that, you know, is maybe not cleanly. It's one that promotes feelings of negativity. It brings up emotions from past circumstances, relationships, um, any of those things that don't make you feel good right? It's not the one, it's the one that you walk into and just like, are like, oh, I'm home. Or, oh my God, I'm so overwhelmed the minute I get home. Whereas a home that is well, is one that you walk in and you're like, I'm so glad I'm home. I have these practices, I have these systems, you know, and that can be as far as taking care of your space so that it can take care of you but also one that holds the practices for things that are well for your body, right? I'm very, very into the fact that, um, and this is something my personal practice did for me, was it helped connect me back to my actual body. And I was able, through my feng shui practice, I was able to create a space that gave me a foundation of support and safety so that I could start practicing things within my home that helped connect me to my body. So deeper meditations, yoga practices, you know, setting myself up to journal, to like do all of these things and to actually feel safe within my space was not something that was normal to me. So it was like when I created that it within my home space, it helped me create it within my personal body as well. And for me, because of some trauma and things that I went through in my childhood and my teenage years, I literally hadn't lived in my body for a very long time. And I didn't realize that until I was about a year into my feng shui practice. And I did this breath work session with a group of women after teaching at a retreat. And, you know, within the last year, I kind of put all these things together and realized like, oh, how amazing that you know, a feng shui practice that I just assumed was going to be about the energetics of my home has actually connected me back to my body and given me this safe space to unfold into. And I just think that's, it's such a powerful um, after effect that really can assist people who have things in their past that they need to feel safe enough to let go of and work through? A lot of my listeners are home-based, small business owners, entrepreneurs. When it comes to working out of the home, there are two scenarios that could happen. Number one is they have a dedicated space. That's just for them with nobody running in and out and throwing things around. And the other is they might be working at a community area, like a dining room table. So in those two scenarios, what are some of the things that would help the listeners create a space conducive to growing their business? from a place of enjoyment as opposed yeah. to feeling like they're in the way or they don't have space or they're a second thought, afterthought in the mm, home. What a great question. So let's let's start with the person that works at the dining room table um, because, you know, having a dedicated space is amazing, but that can also come with its own things as well. But let's start with the person that works at their dining room table. I would say that while I understand this isn't always 
uh, possible or maybe it's not possible daily, I think it's really important to have a strong schedule for yourself. When are you, and no matter what time it is, like you may have to adapt, right? Based on what's going on in your home, what's going on in your family, um, and really setting up that system within your life and within your space. When is the time that you can be most focused and get the most work done? Like that would literally be my first thing. And maybe that doesn't seem like it's, it's, you know, wellness or feng shui related, but to me, anything that goes on in my home is part of my practice, right? So I think first asking, you know, when is the home most conducive to what I need to get done? Because some people need absolute silence, peace and quiet, no one around where other people actually thrive having things going on around them, right? So I think getting very clear about what energetically um, feels good for you and when you are the most productive. I also think, and this is something that I I like to do because um, I you know, work a lot from home. I don't have like an office outside my home, but it's scheduling days where I actually go work somewhere else. And I kind of save activities um, that I can easily do on my laptop that I can do at a coffee shop or whatever. And I also think about that in two ways. Not only am I getting out of the house, I'm changing up my scenery, right? But I'm also putting myself out into the world where I might create relationships because maybe I go to the same place every Tuesday, right? Um, And they say, oh, why do you come in here every Tuesday? So especially if you're like a sales-based business in some sort of way or coach or something like that, I think it's important to get out of your house, right? And give yourself that habit and that routine of, of leaving and like putting yourself in different environments, right? And trying those out. Where do I work the best? What are the tasks that I perform best when I'm not at home, right? So like for me, scheduling, like having content ready, but scheduling it out is something that I like to do at a coffee shop. I'll schedule out YouTube videos for two weeks and blog posts and things like that, where I'm just popping in information and and scheduling it. So that's kind of like the practice, like personal part, which, you know, I just want to mention that because for me, in what I do with myself and my clients, the personal aspect of feng shui is like actually more important to me than the aesthetic part. So, um, which I know sounds kind of funny, especially, you know, being a, a, a former, and I still do this, It's kind of like commingled the design consulting has commingled with that. But I just think you being connected to you is not only a byproduct of being connected with your space, but it's like thinking about how can my space and my routine serve me is really important. Um, The other thing I would say is like as far as the space setup, if you're working at a dining room table, Sit where you are able to have your back to the wall and your eyes open to the entrance of the room. Um, And this is something that I think can be said for an office as well. Um, You know, it's very typical in our society to have our desk against the wall and our back facing the door. And that literally puts us subconsciously in this anxious state. If we're not able to fully relax, we're not able to fully focus most of the time because we don't know what's going on behind us. And it's natural um, as humans, as you know, at one point we had to survive, um, that that makes us not feel super great. So if you can have yourself in what feng shui calls command position, which means your back's to the wall and your eyes are to the entrance of a room, that will help tremendously. And if you have to have your back to the door, placing a mirror on the wall or like some sort of mirror on your desk so that you're able to easily see behind you is really, really important. Um, And then the last thing I would say without, you know, going too crazy is um, sitting in the space that you're doing work, whether that's in a a dedicated office space or whether it's at your dining room table or some sort of corner or whatever, and asking, you know, just maybe closing your eyes for a few moments and like 
How does this space feel? And what do I need to get done in here? So, you know, some people have more introspective things that they're working on. Some people need to be more energized. Does the space feel stagnant to you? Because if you're in a, you're working in a space that feels stagnant, you're probably not going to get a lot done. And you're going to be like, why can't I get anything done in here? Like, that doesn't make sense. And allow yourself to maybe even move around like, okay, maybe the dining room table seems like the right place. But if you keep trying it and it's not working, maybe you, you know what I mean? Like move around your home and see what works for you and use your intuition to kind of move you around because that is one of the things that I think is so cool about this practice is that it allows you to start leaning into your intuition a little bit more. We all have those nudges of like, oh, let me try here. Let me hang this here. Let me move this here. And then we think, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not a designer. I'm not a decorator. I'm not creative. And so we just shut ourselves down. And that's really us shutting down our intuition. So the more that you can kind of just lean into like, oh, well, Maybe I'll like working on the couch today and that ends up working really well. Or maybe I want to sit outside on the patio or whatever. Like we get so focused on like, I have to be here that we forget that our intuition will really guide us. And the more we can lean into that, I see it with clients all the time. The more that they lean into that intuition within their space, they start to trust it more like they're. They start to trust their internal guidance system more just in their everyday life. And I think that's just so powerful. You said something I want to explore because it's something I hadn't thought of. But you you said something that made me think that you can correct me if I'm wrong, that made me think you think of feng shui two different ways. One is the way things sit in your space. And the other is internal. Mm -hmm. Explain that to me. What is that internal feng shui thing? Yeah. Oh, what a great question. So let's see. I want to think about um, how to very thoughtfully answer this so that I don't squirrel off too much. So the words feng and shui literally mean wind and water. So if you think about it like this, I like to use the analogy of a sailboat where you are the sailboat and you're traveling through the water and the wind is what pushes you through. The wind is the unseen. The water is what you can see, right? It's the internal, which can be seen as the internal and external aspects of life. So In feng shui, if we believe that our home is our mirror of our internal self, then there is a direct connection and constant flow of energy between the two. It's like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? And it's kind of like, well, they're kind of, you know, in a cycle. So anything that's gone on in your internally in your personal life is going to show up in your home and things that you allow in your home are going to affect you internally as well. So it's just really this constant cycle. And that's why I think I became so taken with the practice, because for me, that's what I was experiencing and playing around with as a kid right? My, my outer circumstance wasn't ideal. So I was trying to create something within my bedroom that made me internally feel a different way. And, um, and, and it was also the thing that I recognized when I, when I started to just kind of poke around in feng shui, or when I first read that book, you know, I'm like, you know, I have had so many clients tell me like, you design so much differently. I've hired interior designers, but you're so thoughtful about what I want, what means something to me, what doesn't mean something to me, and like how I'm connected with my space. And I've just never had anyone do that with me before. And that's what I think is so powerful is, you know, interior design or interior decorating is just that. It's about the aesthetics. Feng shui is 
interior design, interior decorating with another layer of this internal aspect in this connection of like mind, body, and home, which I think is just a really, a, a, in just such an amazing thing. So do you spend a lot of time with your clients on placement positions of things in their space, or is it more the feeling they get when they see things in a certain place or in a certain room? Yeah, so it depends on the service that we're, you know, we're working on together. Um, If we're doing a home wellness consultation, which is kind of like my let's look at the whole home, we really actually start with like the very internal aspects of what's going on in their life. So it starts as we spend usually like the first 45 minutes to an hour talking about what's going on in their personal life, what's gone on in their life, like all of these things, like it really becomes uh, very therapeutic. And we typically get into some really deep things. And then we move into their home to see where we can make those connections. And that might be moving some things around. Sometimes it's very obvious, right? Like, oh my gosh, like the couch is just in the wrong space, right? And it's blocking kind of just an energy flow. But I would say that happens a lot less. And it's usually more of something like, tell me about this piece of artwork that like I look at and I'm like, oh my God, this makes me feel awful. And I actually had a client recently who um, I said, tell me about this artwork. And he said, well, I typically don't buy artwork I like. I buy artwork that makes me uncomfortable. And I said, oh, tell me more about that. And, you know, they said, well, I will buy things that make me uncomfortable because it makes me think. And then eventually I just get used to it. And I said, wow, that's really interesting. Remember what we just talked about the last 45 minutes and how, you know, um, maybe you don't. There's boundaries that you don't set in personal relationships and within your business that makes you very uncomfortable, but allows you to be very compassionate to someone else and you just deal with it because you think that you should. Isn't that funny that that's also how you choose the artwork that's in your home, you know? And so that's a lot of times it's it's a lot more of that, although there are definitely times where it's like, oh, this just isn't in the right place. Let's move this around, right? So it's kind of a little bit of both, um, although I would err more on the side of like connecting with the space. You speak English, but you throw in energy concepts. And I consider them two different languages. So you you, you follow the, the English version really well. What is your background in energy work? <laughs> <laughs> um, I <laughs> well, I would say that um, I am very. A lot of it is very self-taught. I, I am um, an avid. I'm a very curious person, and I believe that part of just my personality is this endless curiosity on how things. Uh, work kind of uh, energetically and behind the scenes. It's always been something that I've been very into. So I read a lot. I listen a lot. Um, I am a a Reiki level one and two certified. And eventually at some point, probably in the next year or so, I'm going to go ahead and do my three and get my master's. Um, And I don't necessarily practice on clients, but it was really important to me um, as I was getting certified in feng shui, I took it very much upon myself to do a lot of inner work, healing, um, and things like that, that I felt like I needed to, you know, again, to me, the body and the home are so connected. Um, It's our physical manifestation of everything that's going on inside of us. So it was really important to me to also understand how energy is moving through the body and how we can, you know, play around with that and control it. And then I would also say that um, it's also um, uh, some gifts that I've, I've definitely had since I was very young that have, mm, 
become a lot stronger and more prevalent as I have developed my practice and, and the more I work with clients and kind of keep opening up myself, you know, to these kind of different modalities and things like that. Cool. Yeah, I'm one of those lifelong learners. Um, mm -hmm. Feng Shui just, I mean, I've been aware of it, but I've not really been researching or anything like that. But lately it's been showing up a lot. <laughs> So it's very interesting, the timing of things. Love you know? that. Yeah. So when you become aware of something and it becomes this little nudge, okay, start start learning, you know, mm. very interesting. But I think a lot of us are like that. The people who have a little bit of background in the energy world, I, I see that a lot. Once you get exposed to one concept, you want to see what it is, and that leads you to another concept, and you want to explore that. And you take away nuggets from all different disciplines just to help create a different version, better, hopefully better version of yourself and your world, right? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So daily routines for maximum benefit when it comes to entrepreneurs, small business owners, and the use of feng shui, what would that look like? Other than paying attention to where you're actually working, what are some other things? Yeah, so I think, I mean, again, this isn't going to necessarily, um, I mean, you could think of this for your office space as well, which I think is, I think, again, setting your home up to serve you serves your daily life, right? It helps set you up for all the things that you are doing, whether you work at home or whether you go to, you know, a separate office, the way you start your day and end your day impacts everything, so <clears throat> to me, I would say that daily practices from a feng shui standpoint starts when you wake up. And what are you, how are you setting your home up to serve you, right? So let's say that personally, I think that, and, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people would say, oh, I don't want to do that, or they would disagree with me. I think having some sort of meditation practice is an absolute must, especially if you are an entrepreneur or a business owner, because if you are not sitting down at least for a few minutes and trying to connect with yourself, you're doing yourself an injustice, right? Things are easier when we are more connected within and we're able to, I think, find this level and maybe that's not every day, but it's easier to find this level of flow and fluidity um, that to me being an entrepreneur has like deeply impacted not only like my everyday life, but definitely my business, right? When I have to um, force things a lot, I know that I'm not connected to me, which then in turn makes everything so much harder. And I end up making decisions that I shouldn't have made, or I do things that I'm like, this actually didn't benefit my business. I just felt like I needed to work hard that day. So to me, setting up a practice that allows you to connect with yourself first thing in the morning is like one of the most important things. Um, that I kind of share with uh, when I do workshops with all of my clients, especially if they are entrepreneurs and business owners. So maybe meditation doesn't sit well with you. And if you're like, Kate, I don't want to be a meditator. I just don't want to do it. That's totally fine. Can you just take even five to 10 minutes to just be to yourself? Maybe that's sipping your coffee. Maybe you write some things down. Maybe it's journaling, like that type of thing. I just think that's really important. And then I also think, whether you do this in the morning and and or at night, I kind of have a morning and a night routine to keep my home in order as well, because as someone who owns a business and I can kind of be all over the place mentally and physically, sometimes it helps that when I get home, you know, my house is clean. Things are put away for the most part. They're where they belong. Like, so I think having those systems of having a place for things of, you know, um, it could even be something as silly as like meal prepping, right? Because like when you get home, you just don't have time. But if we're never eating, we're again, not our best selves. So like always coming back to like, what's making what, how is my space serving me to be my best self? Because then I can show up 
as my, you know, as my best version, which means I'm more effective, which means I'm more focused, which means I am using my time most efficiently. So that could be anything from meal prep to some sort of morning ritual. And then at night, I always kind of do like a 10 to 15, I call it like my 10 to 15 minute tidy or like, or, um, like I'm like closing down my house, right? I kind of think about it like working in a restaurant or something like, all right, we kind of have like our our closing down checklist, right? Um, Do I need to put dishes in the dishwasher? Is there, you know, laundry to flip? Like, does anything like need, is there something I can easily clean, right? Like, because if we're doing that consistently every day, we're not spending a Saturday or Sunday when we have a few hours of time to just do everything all at once. And then we're mad because, oh my God, we just work so hard all week long. And we spend our only free time scrubbing, cleaning, you know, doing all of these things. So really just having those consistent short practices Um, to make sure that our home is set up to serve us, I think is really important. I'm not sure that I like specifically answered your question, or maybe if you want me to dive deeper into something I can, but I want to keep, you know, rambling on. That's good. Um, Having some kind of a figure out who I am today, who I need to be today for my business or for my family and what tasks are most important. That's, that's a really good start to the morning, right? And then shutting down your house like you would a restaurant. I like that. I think that's a really cool idea because I I also agree with the, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. If you do that every day, you're not so overwhelmed at the end of the week when you want to have fun, relax, and you're looking at this mess of a, a place that you've got to take care of, right? Mm-hmm. So I totally, totally agree with, with all that stuff. Um Something you said early on in the interview in the in our discussion, and it came to me again, so I'm just gonna say it. Yeah. You talked about houses that are so clean and so neat and everything is so perfect. To me, that is like being in a hotel. No personal items anywhere, no personality in the house. If the house is so perfect, who feels comfortable there, right? So is that your space or is that the way you exercise and you use the word control? And sometimes we need that, Mm -hmm. but all the time, if that's what you require all the time to feel comfortable, then there may be something else that you need to consider. I think it's, to me, I'll see a couple different things. Um, and what's coming to me right now as you were talking is the word like depriving and it's like depriving yourself of your authenticity, right? You're not filling your home with things that feel like you, you're not curating it in a way to, um, showcase anything that's personal to you. And it often means that there's some sort of blockage between you and your connection with you, or you don't want to be connected with yourself or you're denying yourself your authenticity, right? You're not being at all thoughtful about what's in your home, even if it's like bad stuff, or maybe I shouldn't say bad, but things that have less than positive energetic associations, right? Like at least that tells part of your story, even if it's something that maybe we would want to like move out and replace with something else, like that's still part of your story. Whereas someone who has no personal effects and it's so perfect To me, that's someone who portrays this illusion of perfection out into the world um, because of a fear of knowing themselves. And so then again, there's that connection with the internal self that I will work with someone through like, okay, you know, like it it is really clean. It, It does, you know, look really nice in here, but who are you? I don't get any to, you know, like I feel very um, you know, sterile in here. And that's often what you'll see kind of portrayed in their personal life or something that they might say, oh, you know, my life feels kind of stagnant. It feels sterile. Um, nothing feels authentic. I don't feel like I have, you know, authentic relationships or things like that. Or you'll hear, 
you know, I don't really know what I want, you know, things like that, because there's this lack of connection with self or this inability to connect with self or um, this fear of connection with self. Because again, there could be some trauma or things like that in the past where the person is afraid to connect to that past self. So they just kind of wipe the slate clean and say, okay, I'm just this, I need to project this, this, um, or of perfectionism so that nobody knows that this stuff actually lives inside of me. And that's just, you know, we all have stuff. And so it's just kind of working through that and allowing for some personalization to kind of come in and this um, surrender to needing to control everything and everything needing to look perfect because you know, as well as I do, while that sounds nice, it's not at all realistic and it's not at all authentic either. I think it also could be a way of keeping yourself safe so that others don't see you. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. I hadn't thought about all these things. It's very interesting. <laughs> I'm telling having... you, you can rabbit hole with this stuff. That's why it's so fascinating to me. I got hooked on it. I was like, wow, there's so many things. Okay. Well, we're getting close to the end of our time together, but you have so much available on your website for people at homesliceliving.com, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Um, and a, a couple of things that we talked about earlier that I think our listeners might be interested in one is called the power of space which is a workshop recording that mm -hmm. you'll make available using the link that people will find below here about a workshop that you did with a group of women on yeah and they were all business owners and entrepreneurs um, and this is basically just, I think it's about an hour long, um, and you'll only be able to access it through the link that we pop in. Um, you'll, it will be on YouTube, but it's a private video. Um, so you can only access it through that link for your listeners. Um, and it is all about setting your, um, your office space up for success. Right. So we're going to get into a lot of nuanced things that we really didn't talk about here and like really setting up the space um, and different things that can help improve the energy, make you more focused. Um, we talk about colors, about decor, about different areas of the room um, that are really powerful. Um, you know, your office, every space in your home and your home in general has an abundance area and all of these things that we kind of tap into to help you um, really connect to and set up the energetics in your space to, again, serve you and help make you your most um, productive, abundant self. Cool. So link is below. <clears throat> the other one that we talked about was empowering your business journey. Mm -hmm. And that it was a podcast recording that you that you have available. Can you mm -hmm. mention something about that? Yeah, so again, it's going to be a little similar tone um, to setting your space up um, to serve you and for success and all of that good stuff. Um, but we're going to talk, I talk a little bit more about the internal aspect of that. So maybe a little bit more of kind of what we've touched on today, but just a deeper dive into that. Cool. And that link will also be below. So I want to thank you so much for being here with me. This was really interesting. And we're actually in the same state. I'm just south of you. Really? Where are you at? I'm in the Dayton area. Okay, great. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So it's probably a little bit cooler where you are, but it's chilly enough today. So, <laughs> <laughs> so before we close out, I want to give you a chance to have any last words that you might have for our listeners. Anything that you like to touch on that we didn't cover yeah so, famous last words we'll call yeah. it famous last words so i think um i know that the words feng shui can be intimidating because our brain has no frame of reference for them unless we are already aware or know somebody that practices and i just want to encourage people to kind of ignore the fact that feng shui feels weird um, because it's really not. And, and that's why you will hear me kind of use it interchangeably with home wellness, 
um, because it really is a wellness practice for your mind, body, and home. And if you can um, allow yourself to be open and um, really allow um, the information to just kind of like Mm, roll around your brain a little bit, I think you'll find that having a stronger awareness of what is in your space and allowing yourself the ability to trust your intuition and giving yourself the permission to play around within your space because of it, you'll find that your life will literally start to change outside of your home. So while the the practice is within the home, what's so amazing is the results that you start seeing in your personal life because of this awareness and intuition that you start to connect to because of a feng shui practice. And it again, it might sound a little weird or, you know, just kind of like, oh, I, this feng shui thing, I just don't know. But I think you'll find that it's a really powerful practice and it really, really can um, change your life. And so if you go to my website, homesliceliving.com, you'll see a few different options where there is, um, you know, a services section. And I work with clients all over the country, traveling and virtually and, you know, here in Ohio in person. Um, if you want to work with me one on one, but also if you're kind of like, mm, I want to dip my toe in, I want a little DIY approach. Also, make sure that you check out um, our community, which if you go to the website, it's in the top right. It says community login. You can click on that. You make a login. It's completely free. Everything on the site is free. And we have blogs and just different resources and a community that you can kind of tap into. Um, and then obviously our shop, we have some different resources and guides and things like that there as well. Um, that you can connect with just to kind of like deepen that practice and get a little bit more comfortable with this thing called feng shui. And I've looked around your site and chances are I'll have to go look some more because I'm, like I said, I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. And so. <laughs> go down the rabbit hole, Jean. You exactly. Have, you did. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's going to be it for this conversation. Thanks everyone for listening. Thanks Kate for being here. Um, this is Jean Border with the Focus Practical Dreamers Journey podcast. Talk to you next time. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Focused Practical Dreamers Journey, where we take out your emotional baggage and heal your emotional body so you get to enjoy the success you desire and deserve. Remember to visit our website at www.focusedpracticaldreamer.com and enjoy even more great episodes like this one. Again, while you're here, subscribe to us via your favorite network. We look forward to seeing you next time on the Focused Practical Dreamer's Journey.